I was in such a dark place. Our cats have been feuding for a year. How many embryos are we going to transfer this time? Life doesn't have a timeline that we all have to adhere to. My relationship with my body and my relationship with my body image. And for some reason, I just feel myself getting emotional even thinking about saying these things to you guys. friends. I have honestly been looking forward to sitting down and filming this video ever since I got the inspiration to do so. I saw JC and Aspen and a couple other people just sit in their car and have a life catch up at the beginning of 2023. And I feel like even though January is kind of almost over with, it's still the start of 2023. And there are a lot of things that are on my heart that I know I want to talk through and express with you guys because I know a lot of you might be able to relate. And I wanted to do it in the comfort of my car because I feel like so many life chats just kind of happen in the car, but it is so snowy out there. And the thought of brushing off my car and getting soaked in snow before <laughs> trying to be cozy in a car was just not the vibe. So I decided on this spot, the spot that I officially shared that Jack and I were going through in fertility. That video went up actually last January and so we are like a full year from that video right now, which is wild. So the setting and the vibes are just very just on point for this kind of life catch up right now. First off, I just want to thank literally every single one of you who was checking in on us over the holidays and into the new year, whether that's through my comments or my DMs. Because before filming this video, I realized that we haven't had a good life chat or a good check-in ever since I shared how Jack and I were really doing this past holiday season. And by now you guys know that that was a pretty tough one for us this year. So thank you so much for just thinking of us. I think I'll never get used to people thinking of us so much and wishing the best for us. It's just overwhelming. <laughs> On the flip side, I know that so many of you all can relate to those feelings and can relate to the fear and the anxiety and all of the emotions that come with infertility, whether it's during the holidays or just throughout the entire year in general. So just know that both Jack and I's hearts go out to you all. We're sending you virtual hugs through the camera right now. I've talked about this before on my channel, but just in case you guys didn't know or just in case you all are new, during one of the absolute most anxious seasons of my life, I turned to therapy for the very first time ever in my life in 2019. And to say that it changed my entire life is the biggest understatement of the century. I would genuinely not be where I am at today without that angel of a therapist. And now I recommend therapy to literally everybody and anybody I know. The only thing is, is that it's super tough to know where to start or even how to get started. But that brings me to today's sponsor, BetterHelp, the world's largest therapy service, and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 25,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. Then you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist at any time and schedule live sessions when it's convenient for you. If your therapist isn't the right fit for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge. With BetterHelp, you can get the same professionalism and quality you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who is custom-picked for you, more scheduling flexibility, and at a more affordable price. You guys can get 10% off at betterhelp.com slash Mac Dingle. That is betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Mac Dingle. And I've also linked them below in the description or you can scan the QR code. Now let's get back to our life chats. <laughs> I've written down some sections of our life to make sure that I touch on a few things, but honestly, this conversation could go sideways at any point in time. But let's start with how Jack and I are doing overall in the new year since the holidays, because again, that was pretty tough and you guys know that and we just haven't had a solid check-in since then. Honestly, we are doing so good right now. 
we really really are when I uploaded that video I was in such a dark place which I know a lot of us can relate to those things just come in ebbs and flows all the time whether it's infertility that you're struggling with or any other sort of waiting period or anything with your health it's just so much and when it just feels all-consuming and for us it was with the holidays and just that like you know solid reminder that we do not have a baby at the end of the year that we got like so intense about trying for one you know that was just really hard but I would say it's almost like as soon as the holidays closed as soon as Christmas came which we had a lovely Christmas I don't want anyone to think that we weren't like actually happy during that opening <laughs> presents vlog it was very very joyful and fun but as soon as the holidays kind of came to a close and we had that random week in between Christmas and New Year's and then 2023 hit it's like a weight was lifted off both of our shoulders and I would even say for me personally ever since the procedure was done over with and I had given myself time to recover just not having that anxiety or physical load on myself was just it's <laughs> just game changing. So we entered 2023 with just really, really good energy. And I know that this is going around on TikTok, but if you're not on TikTok, there's this thing that people have coined lucky girl syndrome. And what it is, is just believing that everything just works out for you. And no matter what, even if there's an inconvenience, it's kind of just like brushing it off your shoulders and be like, you know what? That was a setback, but you know what else? everything always just works out for me. Like, I just know that it does. And it does sound woo-woo, but like saying it out loud, your perspective on life kind of changes and everything just feels so much lighter. And you're not worried all the time about what if this doesn't happen and what if this doesn't like, it truly is the epitome of just changing your outlook on life. And going into this year with that kind of outlook has just been so lovely and ever since having that outlook on life and physically saying those words like everything always works out for me I love how everything just falls into place for me things have I can't there's something to this you guys okay the most random stuff just truly does work out for us it's very bizarre and a lot of it you guys will see really really soon but little things like getting the very last sauce that I needed from the grocery store like they have zero in stock but I got the last one that I needed or looking for a parking spot for like five minutes and then all of a sudden one person is pulling out in the very front row and this is like after physically saying those words it's it's so weird and that's just small stuff but then even bigger stuff our cats have been feuding for a year like maybe even over a year at this point and randomly just this random January something switched and now they can be on the same side of the apartment when nothing else changed we've been slowly reintroducing them doing everything the vet has said doing everything online people have said and we didn't do anything different this January and then all of a sudden they're sleeping next to each other on the couch totally fine and that's just another weight off our shoulders just not having to like keep an eye on them making sure one's not trying to kill the other one you know and with that the bigger picture is once we have a little one here to have our cats like needing to stay separate on each side of the apartment having those gates separating the front and the back it's just an added hassle that we knew we had to address before a little one gets here and for it to be addressed just on its own randomly there's just big things like that and then little things like that that have been happening so that just sets that's the scene for how we went into our new year and we're just feeling really refreshed and really hopeful but really also going with the flow of things. But that seems to be working out, so I think we'll continue to do that. One of the sections I put on here to chat about is finances, like our financial goals for the year, because that's just a huge focus for us. We're not billionaires by any stretch of the imagination, but we do like to keep our finances healthy, and we like to set financial goals for ourselves and really look at concrete numbers and things like that, so if that sounds like something you're 
year into and you have your own financial goals for the year i'd love to know what they are i would love to know because i just love doing that stuff i love tracking that stuff i would say the number one financial goal that jack and i had for this year was purchasing our very first family car and that was accomplished literally in january talk about lucky girl syndrome and just speaking it into existence <laughs> the deal we got on that car was definitely we, we had no business getting that deal like that deal was just wild and it's something that we just couldn't pass up whether the baby comes soon or whether it doesn't come as soon as we would hope we needed a second car anyway we needed more space we needed to upgrade from our two-door car and so to accomplish that financial goal just within like the first month of the year was absolutely wild to us but we feel so incredibly grateful but the next big thing and it wouldn't necessarily be for this year specifically but the next thing that we are saving for and the next thing we have our eye on is a house but something that I did want to share when I was talking about this is I remember a few months ago I uploaded a vlog of me just expressing that I had this like wave of sadness when I realized after we had to pay up front for our second IVF cycle that our dream of a house within the next year or so most likely wouldn't come to fruition for us because things weren't financially going to plan you know with a cycle that we did not expect that we would have to pay for. And I think that's a side of infertility that people know about, like in the background, like how expensive things can possibly get. But when you really look at what the impact is on your future dreams and goals that you had before, and they're kind of crushed now with infertility, it's kind of sad when you pause and realize that that's what's happening. And so your comments on that video were just like way more than appreciated. They were just, it was so great to see that a lot of people could really relate to that, but also just the sentiment that life doesn't have a timeline that we all have to adhere to was such a great reminder. Shortly after that, I just kept getting all of these reminders and these signs of like that same sentiment. Like I was in the gym and I was listening to a series of like motivational speeches or something. I just needed something to uplift my spirits. And this thing came on. I don't know who said it. I don't know who it was because it was kind of like a compilation of things. But this woman came on and this has stuck with me since then. So I need to share it with you guys in case you're having the same thoughts right now. But she was saying how we have have to believe that the things that we wish in this life are coming to us but it's okay that they're just not coming to us all right now at the same time and she went on to make this comparison she said think about all of the food that you ever want to try in your life whether it's food over in Italy or food over just any any food that you want to taste and try in your lifetime now think of if all that food was in front of you at once you wouldn't want to taste all of that right then right there because that that wouldn't leave any food that you've ever wanted to taste for the rest of your life. It would just all be over at that moment. And wouldn't we so much rather taste all of that food throughout our lifetime versus all at once and have it be over? And I thought about that. And between the family car, the baby, the house, like we'd be so blessed, I feel like, if it all just happened at once, you know, like that'd be amazing. But at the same time, I don't know if I would want that personally. To have these goals and know that they will happen eventually gets me excited and looking forward to the timing of each one and knowing that I still have something else to look forward to that I've dreamed about for so long. So whenever I find those thoughts, you know, kind of creeping in, that is something that I have just really found helpful to kind of go back to. But besides the IVF costs and all of those things, which the brunt of it we kind of got out of the way last year, the house is something that we are financially just looking towards savings wise for this year. But we don't think it's actually gonna happen this year. We're just starting to really shovel that away into savings. As far as travel goes or vacations that we want to take this year, my brother is actually getting married in March down in New Orleans and we are so excited about that. It's gonna be like mid 70s when we go and I'm so pumped. So we'll kind of get a break from the main winter and the cold and we'll go down there and it's gonna be for this beautiful celebration and New Orleans is just like the best I'm so excited for it and there's like all these events
events, including the wedding and stuff to be a part of. And I'm just really excited. I've already looked at dresses that I want to wear for each of the events and things. So I'm pretty pumped. I haven't pulled the trigger on the dresses yet though, because like, what if I'm going to need to get them altered or like a different size or something, you know? I don't know if I'll be showing if everything works out that much then at all. But I heard these things up here grow a lot during the first few weeks. So I just want to put that off. And then my very first online friend, I don't know how long we've been friends. I feel like it's been since 2016 or so, but my friend Tara is getting married this year as well. And I'm really hoping to be able to make it to her wedding. My other friend that I met online invited me to her wedding last year and we were like so set and ready to go, but it literally fell right like the week after transfer when we'd have to go in for like monitoring appointments and blood work and stuff. So I was really bummed we wouldn't be able to go. Plus it was just such a sad time in general. I was so bummed. So I really, really, really hope that everything works out for this wedding and we'd be able to visit her. And then on top of that, usually Jack and I, we don't plan this. We, it's, it's never organized ahead of time, but usually around March, April timeframe, we are so sick of being here. And I definitely am affected by the winter and by the non warm weather and lack of sunshine and all of that stuff. I'm super affected by it. And by that time we are so incredibly sick of it that we just like go to Florida just last minute looking for any deals that we really can. So by now you would think that we would have something like that planned every year to go to Florida around that time. But like I said, my brother is getting married and it's in New Orleans. So I think that'll be really exciting and kind of take the place of that. Plus I'm putting it out in the universe and I'm not planning a Florida trip right now because I want a baby moon. We need to we need to save that for a baby moon and I don't know where it would be yet. Definitely somewhere warm and relaxing and just like carefree is what we would be going for. So if you guys took a honeymoon or a baby moon anywhere specific and it was just like that vibe, beach, I'm looking beach wise, like tropical wise. And if you enjoyed it, let me know. And if you didn't enjoy it, also let me know. If you have any horror stories of like avoid this resort or something like that, let me know in the comments below. But that is something that I don't have set plans for, but but I'm leaving space for it. And then each year we either go out west to see Ilya and a bunch of friends we made out there in Seattle when we lived there or he comes here. So with everything going on, we don't have any set plans for that this year, but one of our friends has a super golden birthday going on this year that we would love to fly out and see her for. So that might be in the plan, but I'm just really excited at all of these possibilities, even though only like one of them is set in stone at this point. Another category that I have written down is health. And I think I wrote it down because it's like been a section of my new year's thoughts, goals, resolutions, whatever you want to call them for so long. But I think this year for the first time ever, it's meant something very different for me because this past year I have made such strides in my relationship with my body and my relationship with my body image. I'm so proud of myself for that. Like it's it's been a long time coming and I wanna save that specific chat I think for a separate vlog because that is just something I want to take my time talking about it with you guys. So I'm gonna save all of the nitty gritty details. But when I look at what the health section for me looks like this year. I think about how last year in 2022, 2022 was the first first year that I consistently went to the gym three times a week. And it did start out with what I came to know as an unhealthy mindset for myself personally, which was get in the gym because I want to look a certain way and I want these types of muscles and all of that stuff. But as I continued to just go to the gym and just get healthier and stronger in general, that goal totally changed for me in the best way possible. It no longer became a goal of wanting to look a certain way, but more so became a goal of keeping this up because I feel the best that I've ever felt. And I think what I wanna go into more detail with you guys is how my personal body image related to infertility and just all of the fluctuations and treatment cycles and things that come with that and how that in turn related to kind of the best body image year unexpectedly that I've had ever. But this year's health section just relates to a continuation of that and a continuation of the improved relationship that I do have with my body. When it comes to, fingers crossed, 
pregnancy, like just carrying all of that into and making sure I don't lose it when it comes to pregnancy. Because when you want something so badly, but it directly correlates with a lot of changes with your body, I know that that is going to be a journey within itself for me personally. So that is my goal for this year, is to continue just being healthy in general and keeping up that consistency physically and mentally when it comes to this next phase of life, which will be pregnancy. <laughs> There's a couple random things that I want to touch on that I've gotten questions about or I know that people have been wondering and I would love to share while we are just sitting down and chatting. The first is will I share my transfer vlogs real time this time for our second embryo transfer? And although I cannot wait to share all of those vlogs like I did with my first transfer, I loved that they were delayed last time because it just gave us this space that we ended ended up really needing during that time while still being able to share that with people who really benefited from seeing those moments. I just think that that was such a nice balance in that way. So we're gonna continue that on with this transfer since it worked so well, but don't worry, you guys will definitely be seeing all of the stuff. <laughs> and then to answer this question, how many embryos are we going to transfer this time? If you guys missed it, we are planning to transfer only one embryo again this time and personally I do not have a desire to transfer more than one I don't even want to think about any future possibilities of needing to think about that because this one is going to work but where I'm at right now is if multiples were to ever happen I would be obviously over the moon I have been so excited for pregnancy just so excited for a baby and I would never just poo poo a pregnancy just because there are multiples you know I'd be so grateful but if I had my choice, after everything that we've been through, and let me know if you resonate with this, but after everything that we've been through with this journey and just like literally just everything, like I feel like I just don't have to go into it because you guys have seen it. I am just so hoping for a smooth, stress-free, as much as possible, but we all know myself, we all know that that's not necessarily 100% possible, but just a smooth, uncomplicated pregnancy. If I can have that, that would be amazing. If I can have that with multiples, that would be amazing too. But there's a lot that comes with multiples that it doesn't necessarily come with a single pregnancy, statistically speaking. So anything that I can do for just a routine pregnancy after everything that we have not had, which is so not routine, would be really, really nice. <laughs> Along the lines of that, I think I just want to end this life chat session with just, gosh, there's no words that I could say to people who are in the thick of it like we are right now. And for some reason, I just feel myself getting emotional even thinking about saying these things to you guys. <laughs> so I'm, I'm gonna keep it brief, but I just want you to know that I am <laughs> Why am I doing this to myself? I just want you to know that I'm really proud of you because this past year it was not easy. It's the hardest thing that I've ever had to do. Mentally, physically, emotionally, it's just so straining. And so if you're with us in this, if you are going through these things as well, I need you to know that I'm so proud of you because, because I don't think that you tell yourself that that often. And I say that because I don't tell myself that that often either, but you are so strong and you can totally do this. And I am so proud of everything that you've done, even if it doesn't feel like it's amounted to anything yet it will. I believe that deep in my soul that this will happen for us. And I just need you to know that you're such a warrior. Like if you're doing any of this and getting through it, you're already incredibly strong. I just needed to say that in case you haven't told yourself that lately. I'm here to tell you that. But my friends, that is going to be it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you related or resonated with anything that I talked about in this video, make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already because I upload videos like these on Wednesdays and Sundays. Everybody do not forget to give this video a big old thumbs up. All of my socials are linked down below and I I will catch you in the next one, my friends. We'll see you later. Bye.